Hi Paul, how's it going? Hi James, not too bad are you? Yeah, really good, really good. Um, how are you finding the uh, coronavirus lockdown? Yeah, fine. Um, yeah, just working from home. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine other than that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been pretty crazy, pre pretty crazy couple of weeks. Um, but uh, thanks for thanks for joining this. Um, I guess uh, teams kind of catch up teams kind of case study about um, how you've been getting on with the Tenzigs and um, and and how uh, the I guess if it's had any impact from uh, to the business from from working um, you know if your users are having to work from home and so on um, so I think um, perhaps we should have a, a bit of an introduction um, to us both for anyone who's watching so um, I'll go first I'm I'm the sales director at Tenzig and um, uh, been, have been helping JCB Finance with their, um, I guess, their deployment of, of their upgrade to to the Tenzig devices. Um, and um, yeah, when we first started on that that project, we were we we um, were introduced to Paul and um, and Paul uh, had a look at our products. So. I guess over to you, Paul. Tell us a bit about yourself and, and JCB Finance. Okay. Um, so my name is Paul Chapman. I'm IT Support Manager at JCB Finance. Um, uh, so I manage all aspects of um, support as well as managing a lot of our infrastructure. And we currently have between, we currently have in the region of 110 um, users uh, split remotely field based and um, mainly based in our office at the mill and we are a finance company primarily dealing with finance for JCB um, products but we also do um, other products as well and yeah we made uh, we reached a big massive uh, target of 1.1 um, 1 billion in assets this year so and we're also celebrating our 50th year in business as well so, wow yeah. Con congratulations big uh, year despite everything that's happening no, no, that's, that's good to hear um okay well um so tell us a bit about the um the um the project that you were were looking to start on and i guess starting at the start tell us um tell us about your environment before you found, before you started looking to upgrade, where were you? Where were you coming from in terms of um, the environment? Um, so up until uh, the start of this year, really, we were running a Windows Seven on-prem Citrix environment uh, using Windows Seven embedded Thin clients as the means of accessing that. Um, with the uh, end of support for Windows Seven, as well as um, it coming to the end, or of the product life cycle for our Citrix on-prem environment. We started looking at um, some different options there and we just decided to go with a Citrix cloud environment. So um, moving all of our uh, on-prem into a, a mixture of Azure and the Citrix cloud offering. Uh, around that, we also looked at um, moving to a Windows 10 desktop and uh, having a different look at um, some other thing clients. So. We, we went to Dell, um, which is our current vendor, um, and met yourselves, Tenzig, at uh, IP Expo last year. Um, we also looked at the iGel as well um, as, as part of that uh, procurement process um, at the beginning of the project. Okay, and so um, so your estate used to be Windows 7 embedded thin clients. Um, um, were, were there any benefits to using Windows 7 embedded? Were there any downsides? Um, I, I only worked with it for about a year, but I, I, to be honest, I could only really see downsides. Um, patching them and keeping them up to date um, was very tedious, as well as having to um, keep antivirus up to date and all the normal stuff you have with running a Windows environment. Uh, also, you've got a full operating system on the client, um, which is quite cumbersome to run when you're trying to use as minimal hardware as possible. Yeah, no, it's uh, 
Yeah, that's pro probably what I was expecting you to say, to be honest. Um, so um, moving to the cloud and upgrading the Citrix was pretty much the, the motivating factor around the upgrades. What um, in terms of the users, you mentioned that you've got home workers, people who work in the in the office in the mill, and 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 so on. What kind of what kind of applications do they use? What kind of peripheral devices do they use? Are there are there any um, any things that kind of gave you concerns in terms of moving to the cloud or moving, changing and upgrading the environment? Um, so from, from a moving to the cloud environment, um, we hoped it would give everyone uh, better availability who was outside of the main office. Um, we, we're quite remote where our office is and we, we can be susceptible to WAN issues. And with everything being on-prem, that meant um, if there was WAN issues, all of those field staff were um, unable to work, basically. Mm. So it would um, give them, uh, hopefully, much better reliability for the, all of our field staff. The field staff, um, we provide a full home office for, so they get a thin client, um, along with a printer and scanner to attach its peripherals, along with all of your standard stuff. Um, yeah, we, we sort of expected that stuff to all work fairly flawlessly. Uh, with regards to people in the office, um, yeah, not many. there's not many peripherals used. Um, the, the only real one we had concerns about was uh, we had to use smart card readers to access various online banking systems, and uh, we've had major problems with them. Uh, in the past with our Windows 7 embedded, um, so was expecting pretty much the same from uh, wh whichever vendor we went to uh, for the replacement of, of the hardware. Okay, makes sense. Um, and um, in terms of the um, evaluation then, so you said that you previously used Dell Thin Clients in the environment and then you tested a couple of others. What um what was that process? Um, tell us about that evaluation journey. You know, um, I think you said you found us at, at IP Expo and I guess the others as well. Or, but tell us a bit more about that process. How did it work? Was it easy to easy to get um, hold of demo units? Was it easy to um, yeah? Were there any difficulties? How did it all all come about? Yeah, with, with um, Dell being our current supplier. We found it quite easy to uh, get hold of thin clients from them to um, as demo units. Um, we weren't that impressed by them, hence um, going out to various people at IP Expo. Um, yourselves, you got as demo units. Uh, we you come and did an on-site demo within a couple of weeks, and then we had demo units within a week after that. I think it was really quick. You, you had the units um, we wanted to trial. Uh, you gave us a good broad breadth of devices as well. So we had some of the top end ones compared to some mid range ones and some lower end ones as well. Uh, with regards to what testing we put them through, um, we didn't have our Citrix cloud environment set up at this point. So we were going very much on the vendor's word on how they would work and um, references from other businesses. Um, we felt confident from yourselves um, as well as Dell that, uh, that we would be able to do the job. And then it was um, making sure they worked with our current environment as well, um, just while we were transitioning so they uh, could carry on working. We didn't have this scenario where everyone had two devices on the desk. Um, as for getting it hooked up to our on-prem environment, we literally just plugged them in, um, pointed them at the URL for our Citrix environment, and they, they just worked straight out the box. Yeah, that's good. So it's, it's it's a good point that you make then. So that the the tensigs that you were evaluating worked both with the old environment and also the the new environment that you were that you were um, hoping to get up and running. So I guess that's important, you know, to have that streamline of of change. So I guess almost you were able to upgrade the devices before the cloud system was ready. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, and so, Matt, from I guess from um, the devices that you tested from Tenzig, I remember when I came to visit you and I asked all of the questions and, you know, you, like you said earlier about the types of um, peripherals that you have, the kind of performance that your users need, we were able to select a certain type of, of devices for you to test. Um, but from my approach, I do remember thinking, 
I think we can do this with the Zero client. I think we can do it with a, a device that runs just the Linux um, Citrix receiver um, rather than a, um, a Windows-based thing client. And so um, what was your, um, how did your tests go with a, a, a device that runs the Linux Citrix receiver? Was it, was it good? Did you have any problems? Did you have any issues? No, we, we had some experience of um, Linux-based thin clients um, from our previous vendor. Uh, we, we always preferred them. They were a lot easier to maintain, update, and um, they, they just were a lot smoother when the users were operating them. So we already had an inkling we wanted to go that way. It was just whether um, we could get the support for peripherals and um, various other bits uh, from whichever the vendor was. Um, so yeah, you, you obviously showed us the Linux versions. Uh, most of the stuff we had worked straight out the box, which were, we were really impressed with. And yeah, testing-wise, they were so much simpler to set up and yeah, just get working. They, they, yeah, they just worked out the box. There's not more you can say, say about them, really. That's good. Um... I was hoping you'd say you'd had some issues. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's see how we, uh, how we solve them. Um, so did you have any issues with smart card readers or anything? Did they work out of the box or did you have to do a bit of, a bit of, a bit of, get a bit of support from us or? Yeah, so um, the smart cards, as we expected, we did have a problem with um, re-engaged yourselves. Uh, you put quite a lot of effort into helping us work through those issues. Um, yes, yeah, support in general. Um, always very responsive, uh, always very helpful. Um, I don't think we managed to get to the bottom of the smart card reader yet, but that's because we've not been able to get any smart cards sent over to you okay. um, to use in your lab because of um, various restrictions we have in place. Course, and yeah. We're trying to work around that. But, um, yeah, certainly um, I, I do think you'll get that resolved when we're able to get the equipment to you to test with. So. Yeah, have every confidence in that regard. Okay, well that's that's good. Um, and um, you you mentioned the setup of the devices. I guess that's probably going to bring us on to um, questions around Tenzig Manager, um, which um, when you move from Linux or, or Linux type devices or zero clients, um, if you move to them from Windows Seven embedded, it's a it's a it's a big change, isn't it? Um, what, um, how did you find Tenzig Manager and how did you find that it, um, did it do everything that you wanted it to in terms of managing those devices, setting them up, configuring them? What, um, tell us a bit about Tenzig Manager. Yeah, so um, Tenzig Manager, um, obviously we got as part of the package um, when we got the hardware. Um, it, it's a very good piece of software. We installed that um, straight into Azure. We, did, we didn't put that on-prem, so. Uh, very easy to set up. Your support guys um, sort of checked over it once I'd set it up and just um, let me know if you had the best practices and stuff. Uh, yeah, um, we set it to scan our on-prem network to automatically pick up um, devices that were in the office. They That, that worked fairly seamlessly. Um, new firewall rules put in place and stuff like that, which is obvious. Um, but yeah, um, then for the off-site ones, um, we did have to, we create, or I created a URL um, in our public DNS records so we could add that into the Tenzig um, manager profile on the end devices, which we just had to put in prior to shipping them out. But once we shipped them out, um, the end users connected them up and they connected straight into the Tenzig manager and, and got the configuration they needed. Okay, so you've got Tenzig Manager installed in the cloud, and you've got and you use the cloud agent to enable the the devices that you send to your end users to connect essentially over the internet um, to that's the correct. to the Tenzig Manager in the cloud. Um, that's good, and you, like you say, you just um, you just put in that um, that address so that they could find it. Um, so that sounds pretty easy. Um, and it sounds good that you mentioned that you spoke to the support guys as well. Um, did you have any um, feature requests or any issues with with the Tenzig that we needed to implement? Any um, any additional support that we gave you? Um, with regards to the 
Tenzig manager, um, no. Um, we did have a we, uh, we did have a support request in when we discovered a problem with printers at one of our remote offices, um, which uh, you guys um, were able to replicate on your own stuff and um, get resolved. And I think there was a new firmware version out um, within the month, which uh, contained the fix for that. Um, when it comes to rolling out the firmware, um, Tenzing Manager makes that very easy. We've got um, groups of devices for various locations, remote workers, um, our remote site, and um, all the field staff. Uh, that means I could apply different firmwares and different configurations to all of those devices um, based on that group's needs. Um, it was also immeasurably helpful in the situation we find ourselves in when moving to remote home working where um, I could set it to automatically apply a configuration so uh, the user who would normally be in the office took it home, plugged it in, it reported into the Tenzing manager, the Tenzing manager automatically detected um, it was in a different location and needed a different configuration. It applied that configuration within a few minutes, the device rebooted and the user was able to work from home um, pretty much straight away. That's brilliant. So. Um... In moving to um, the office for moving to home working, they were just simply able to take their Tenzigs home and plug them in. Tenzig manager did did the rest. It just automatically noticed that they weren't on the normal VLAN and and that they needed a different um, template configuration and and away it went. That's that's pretty cool. Was that a difficult to set up? Yeah, definitely. No, it was very easy to set up. Um, Tensing Manager is quite intuitive. Um, once you've used it for about half an hour, um, you can figure it out fairly easily. And, and yeah, um, I can't understate how, how helpful it was in reducing the amount of support time we had to provide home users um, getting them set up and working from home in what was a very busy time for us. That's awesome. And um, it's worth mentioning as well for the viewers that Tenzig Manager is completely free. You know, there's no extra cost for this cloud agent. There's no extra cost to, to run it in if you wanted to install it in your um, as your cloud. Um, it's Tenzig Manager license is completely free. So that's really good. Um, let me see if I've got any other questions for you. Um, so you've pretty much covered everything, to be honest, Paul. So um, perhaps a couple of other, well, perhaps one other question is, um, you know, would you recommend Tenzig to any other organisations and over the, you know, the the other vendors that you chose, why did you choose Tenzig? Um, we, we chose Tenzig because uh, we liked the product. It, it worked really well. Um, we got the feeling from you guys that we were going to get very good support compared to what we'd experienced previously and uh, what other suppliers were, were presenting to us. Um, you have a s slightly wider range of um, spec of devices compared to um, some of the other ones we looked at. And um, uh, as it always comes down to um, price point, um, yeah, very reasonably priced for the market, um, at, uh, the different levels of spec um yeah and, and considerably cheaper than some of the others we looked at as well that's really good um so yeah thanks uh, thanks for that um that feedback um is is there anything else you'd like to add on uh, on the tenzig and and um the environment are you, is i guess after that whole this whole project is now completed um has it been a success from tra migrating from your on-premise and Windows 7 thin client environment to the cloud and your um, non-Windows Linux type thin clients, is this uh, is it been a success? Um, with regards to the thin clients, um, yeah, I, I think it's been been a huge success. Um, we, we've had our stumbling blocks along the way, but as we've already covered, your support guys have um, been really helpful when we have hit those and we've been able to resolve them quickly. Uh, with regards to the wider cloud project, we were meant to complete that at the end of March. So, um, yeah, uh, we, we've still got a few little bits just to finish off at the end because other stuff took priorities. But, yeah, yeah generally gone very smoothly. Um, yeah, transition to from Windows 7 to Windows 10 has gone really well. Um, yeah, 
Uh, we, we had some applications which wouldn't run in the usual stuff you get when changing operating systems, but we've worked through all those. And yeah, Citrix Cloud is up and running and it's performing well. So it's, it's just migrating those last straggling users over now, um, which uh, unfortunately got uh, delayed because of um, all of the events over the last few weeks. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, that's um, it's uh, it's good that the project has generally gone really well, and it's it's not far away from being completed. So, um, yeah, thanks ever so much for the um, the feedback today and the, your time on this um, this video session. And uh, yeah, really appreciate you um, choosing Tenzig and and sharing your uh, experiences. Great, thanks for your time, James. Yeah, no worries. All right, Paul, thanks a lot. Thanks again. I'll I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you soon.